Welcome to Enter the Mind podcast, episode five. This is Robert Nelson, and I'm here with my co-host. Sarah Carlin. And we'd like to welcome you to this episode. Uh, today's topic is states of mind. And uh, forgive me, I am recovering from a bit tongue, so my pronunciation is slightly off, but it's 90% there. Um, Kira, how are you doing today? I'm doing pretty good for... Uh a Monday. Well, honestly, not like for a Monday. I actually like love Mondays, but like it's a pretty darn good Monday. Heck yeah. And I'd also like to welcome you back to a video for a couple episodes there. We had you on uh, audio. So uh, it's great to see you. And uh, yeah, let's uh, Mm -hmm. rock it today. So uh, topic of the day, states of mind. I believe you have something for us. Yeah, so um, last week we talked about Tony Robbins, and I remember this one day, you know those things that like stick to your brain, like they just like stick to your freaking brain? Well, um, he mentioned something, it's all about the state that you're in, and I wrote something in it in my mind coaching book, and I love it so freaking much, because when you write down all of the you know, low vibration states of mind, and then all of the high vibration states of mind. I mean, it's a complete difference, like a, like a 100% shifting into a new reality. And it blows my mind every single time I shift my state. Um, so I think it's really important to talk to our listeners and our viewers today about, um, always making it a habit to check in in what state you are um like consistently habitually um so yeah i mean like there's different states um you can be in a free state you can be in a grounded state you can be in an abundant state right right feel how good those felt right like imagine if like you could just kind of like shift because you can't Feel like you can imagine what an abundant state would feel like so when you switch over to like an ungrateful state or a scarcity state ooh, those are dark those are some dark states right there so not like we fall into them on purpose but just sometimes throughout our days we can fall into them due to like old conditioning um so so yeah that's today's topic awesome um uh, i think it yeah it's totally this episode totally belongs in our series uh it belongs in this podcast because if we're going to enter the mind and understand it we have to realize that at some point i said that not in this podcast but in my life at some point i was saying that life is nothing more than a continuous string of emotions or emotional states, or it's this collection of, you know, this morning when you were going to the store, you were feeling, you know, such and such, you were still waking up, then you got your coffee, had all this energy, then you called your friend on the way home, you had a conversation with your friend, you were excited. And basically the entire, the entire thing that we call our life is just a series of different emotions that we experience. It's just, we're talking about over, you string those together moment by moment and it, and it uh, comprises an entire lifespan, could be 80 years long, you know? But um, that's, that's the zoomed out version, okay? Now let's zoom in into like one of those states, right? So it's, it's important that um, like, I agree with you that we, that we understand what state we're in and then that we, and then the next level in advancing is to be able to shift that state. And, um, yeah, and you're right. Tony Robbins has a lot of techniques for that. Uh, the fire walk would be one of them, uh, which people, I think some people, think of it as mostly a marketing gimmick but it's much more than that um the firewalk is actually the culmination of his 
uh, teaching of uh, putting yourself into a peak state so much so that you can overcome like uh, difficult environments, uh, namely hot coals on your feet. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, so that, those are the thoughts that come to my mind. Is there anything that you'd like to add to that? I think it's really interesting. I feel like you've been consumed by this topic of the conveyor belt, which is great because I feel like we mentioned it in episode three, I think it was, and then you mentioned it again in um, four, and I feel like you just mentioned it again now, which is, <laughs> I love that because I feel like you just keep bringing stuff back to it, um, and it got me thinking. Um, I'm, I'm wondering if there's a connection. So we talked about what we put on our conveyor belt and how we're either producing shit or gold. And I feel like the state of mind, the state of mind change the mind of state change, <laughs> the change of the state of mind. I'm wondering if that can be put on the conveyor belt, but I'm wondering how long the product lasts. You know, I can understand if we're, you know, constantly putting out a state of gratitude and a state of, um, a state of um, excitement, a state of, listening, a state of um, just enjoyment, like joyfulness. And I'm wondering, because right now I'm picturing in my mind and I'm picturing like joyful minute, right? But then one minute it's like ungratefulness and then another minute it's like um, gratitude. And then the other minute it's like um, uh, loser, right? So I'm wondering, I'm wondering if the conveyor belt has anything to do with that. I'm really, this is, this is something that's pondering my mind and I, I can't, I can't find the answer to it. Do you know what I'm saying? I think I do. And I think that my answer is yes. Conveyor belt model does have something to do with this. Um, I mean, ideally anyone's philosophy should be cohesive. Everything should tie together. Um, so how would that work with this? Well, it comes down to, let's, let's use the example of hockey, my favorite, my favorite sport, right? So I played college hockey and we went to these tournaments in the Midwest, um, in Ohio and Michigan, and, right? And there, what I noticed over the years of playing hockey is especially tournament style, okay? Because tournament style is different. In regular season, you just play a team on a Friday night and then you don't see them again or you don't play another game for three days or something, right? In weekend tournaments, you might play two or three games in one day. You have two teams, right? First team wins early in the day and they're like, uh, and they're like the number one seed. So they're like, they're like the best team in the league, right? They're expected to win a championship. Then they have, there's a team that's like kind of below them, um, like almost in second place in the running. And they play a game. They have to overcome like two or three wins in order to even like make it to the championship or something like that. So they'll play one game, they'll win it, play the second game and they win it. And then right after that is the championship game. Right. Well, mm -hmm. team number one, who's actually better and more skilled, they didn't play since 8 a.m. in the morning. It's now 3 p.m. And this other team that's worse off or worse skill wise is coming off of two victories. They are in a peak state. Their, their uh, testosterone's going, their endorphins are going, right? They're in the state of victory. And what happens is, that second team, even though they're not as skilled, 
they end up beating the first team because of their psychological momentum. <laughs> okay. So tell me how this can be correlated with the conveyor belt. Okay, so it's it goes like this, like You know how Grant Cardone, he like teaches sales, right? And he has like a sales team. I would say if you look at a salesperson's um, performance in a given day, right? How many calls they made, how many sales they, they made, how many calls they converted. I would, I would look at that not, not as a function of like, oh, here's how much like, effort or here's what they chose to sell today i would look at that as a function of their state so if they sold a lot in that morning i would think that they were in i would ask the question what state were they in what were they doing right before they were selling you see what i mean so what causes the state drop could it be that these salespeople are doing so good, bam, 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 because they're in a good state in the morning, what drops their state? Is it an old habitual thought pattern? Is it, I'm not worthy to continue to have a good day? Where, where's, what's that root thought that then starts to convey your belt out the shitty states that causes their performance to drop? Right. And that's, that's why self-limiting beliefs and negative self-talk are so elusive is because they're invisible. And if you were running a factory and you had, um, and you had a, you had a conveyor belt trying to bring products through the factory and then some invisible raccoon jumped onto the conveyor belt and rode into it, into the machine and messed up everything for the whole day, you would be like, what caused this? Like, I was doing fine, right? It's because the mm. raccoon was invisible. And that's what negative self-talk is like. This is such an interesting topic. So, which... So the thoughts come first before the state or does the state come first and then the thoughts? Well, it, it's, I think let's try to tie it into hypnosis. And that's a field that I don't know, I don't know a whole bunch about, but I know a little bit about, okay? And hypnosis is basically, um, I mean, when most people hear it, they think of somebody swinging, you know, swinging an object in front of them and saying, you know, Keep your eyes focused on the object. You're getting sleepy, right? Um, and there's some truth to that. What, here's what we can take away from that is number one, the person is focusing on something, right? They have their attention focused, okay? Number two, they kind of like relax, right? They're told to like, they're told to relax their breathing. They're told to uh, sit comfortably, okay? What does that sound like? That sounds like when people go to the movie theater their attention is focused and they're relaxed. Now there's a phenomenon um, where you go to the movie theater, it's a dark room, your attention is focused on one thing for two hours straight and then all of a sudden movie's over, lights come on and you're like, wait, where am I? I was in uh, Narnia two minutes ago, like what is this? Mm -hmm. And then you have to walk, you have to make that awkward walk out into the hallway, you know, where there's like, where all the popcorn stands are and you're like how did i even get here you're like oh yeah i drove my car wait where's the parking lot like do i even remember where i parked and what happened was your mind was taken on this complete journey right and and so what happened it was i i don't i don't want to use the word hijacked because it wasn't like the mind wasn't really like hijacked but um but what happened my point with those the hockey tournament story was that that team that had the early win, they spent the rest of the day sitting around watching worse teams play. 
right? And that's like watching a movie. So they got focused. What was feeding into their minds? The worst teams, the teams that were worse than them, playing from 9 a.m. until 5 p.m. So then they go back to play the championship later in the day. What have they been watching for the last six hours? They've been watching crappy teams playing. And that's exactly what they, that becomes their reality then, right? Yeah. Yeah, I like that. I think it's, it's really interesting, the movie theater, because it's like, when I'm reading Sell or Be Sold and shit, I swear to you, I could read like five lines and I'm already in a different mental state because I'm zoomed in, I'm focused on it. And even just his wording, it's making me feel better. But like, if I were to, if I were to watch a scary ass movie, my state afterwards, I'd be looking, looking by my shoulder in my own house. So it's, I think it definitely, yes, we all know it's, it's all about what you focus on. So the connection then between focusing in thoughts and state change. So what really caught me was when you were talking about the office, and I'm wondering if, I'm not positive about this, it's really, it's just the thought that came up. I'm wondering if, say it becomes, say he gets into the office at 8 a.m. and around 11, 30, 12, he's starting to, starting to, to wander, his mind is starting to wander. And it's because maybe he had a thought what am I going to have for dinner tonight, right? And maybe it's not the thought about the dinner that brings him down, but the, the anxiety that comes with thinking about, oh, what am I going to have for dinner? And then all of a sudden you get anxious because you start thinking about it, but it's not happening now. So you start focusing your attention. Oh, we got to go out to eat. Is my wife going to make dinner? Am I going to make dinner? Are we going to order? And then you start like, and you start getting all jittery and anxious in the office, all because of that one little thought. But you could most likely stop it, right? Because I've, I've been training my mind to do this. If a, if a thought comes up and you don't entirely want it there, like it's not like a wanted thought, like say I'm, I'm in the middle of, of typing, um, you know, maybe sending out some emails to clients or, you know, um, engaging with people on Instagram. And all of a sudden, the thought comes up, what am I going to have for lunch? And I start thinking, I'm like, hmm, <laughs> what do I want for lunch? <laughs> uh, but then I can refocus my attention and change my state from anxious to a state of concentration and momentum, drive, and focus, right? So you can easily shift back from that state if you allow that separation to come through between that thought that takes your attention away from what you're doing and what you're doing. So there's that little space now that's in between and you can kind of let go of that thought that's going to change your state and focus on what you're doing right now and just get back in that state. Just, just hop back in the state. Yeah, I like the example you gave of the reading the sell or be sold book because I would call that an example of like instant um, state change or like um, there's all sorts of terms, you know. Um, mm -hmm. There's also instant hypnosis, right? Uh, <laughs> uh, there's videos on YouTube about that, but um, but instant state change and Tony you know, I remember from going to Unleash the Power Within that he talked a little bit about that, you know, that he would have these, um, these anchors, right? So he would put you in a peak state and then you would do this certain motion. You would go like, yes, yes, or something. And 
right before you were to walk across the coals of fire, he would have you do the same exact motion and say the same exact thing. And, and so it, it's almost like it was like an instant state changer. And that's very, that's in contrast to the longer drawn out versions that I gave of uh, going to the movie theater, right? Which is a two hour state change. Or um, the hockey example, sitting at the rink all day long after you won the eight o'clock in the morning game and waiting for the 5 p.m. championship and sitting there getting tranced uh, into lower performance uh, playing just by watching the other teams. That, that would, that's like a seven hour trance, you know what I mean? But, so there's all, all these different ones, right? What I liked about um, your example was that it shows how you can catch yourself, right? When you become good at monitoring the mind, then you start to realize that it's not you walking over here and then walking over there. It's your mind walking over here and walking over there. And you've been in the same place the whole time. And once you kind of separate yourself from the mind in that way, then you can catch it, right? The same way you catch like a little, uh, a little kid that's wandering away from you. And you're like, hey, wait, you know? <laughs> It's like, don't wander away from uh, mommy and daddy, right? So you catch it, and then how do you bring it back? Well, now we're talking about mental techniques. You know, if you were a parent bringing back your kid, then we're talking about parenting techniques. But if we're talking about an individual and their mind and catching their mind walking off and bringing their mind back, now we're talking about mental techniques. Welcome to Enter the Mind podcast. <laughs> That's amazing. You know why? Because last week, I think that we talked about, I think that we had an intro, why enter the mind? Because it's that one door in your house that has been in your house all along, but you never darn gone in it, right? So when you said that it's like our mind walking away from us, we've been right here, but little, little kid in our minds just walking through all these doors, right? Oh, I was... I'm not sure if it's you are a badass at making money or you are a badass. I think it's you are a badass at making money. But she, Jensen Sarah, she talks about um, the little prince. And he's in your brain. And when the king died, the little prince took over. And he's been trying to run this town. He's trying to run it. He's doing the best he can. And, like, you got to tell him, like, hey, little prince, I'm here to take over. I've, I've been sent to, you know, be king now. And little prince is like, like, I worked so hard for this. What? No, you're not taking my throne. I am the prince, right? So when the little prince is walking through all these doors, imagine imagine your, your brain as, as like this big, beautiful thing full of all these goddamn doors. And you walk into this door of like horrors, right? And the little prince is just hanging out in there. And you're like, dude, little prince, nah, right? But now imagine walking through a door in your mind that is your dream life imagine walking into that room and seeing everything that you could ever imagine right so it's like if you ever catch the little prince running awry you know hanging out in places he goddamn shouldn't have the little prince walk into a room that's a lot more satisfying have him walk into the room of all of the books that you've read and all of the things that you remember from the books. Or have him walk into the room of shadows so he can see all the shadows that he's been hiding, that he's been locking up. Um, you know, you can control the little prince in your brain. And I think I love that because I've been thinking about that a lot, that sort of analogy metaphor. I don't know what it is. But that thing where, you know, you, your mind is walking away from you. You know, it's not you. You're right here. But the, per the thing in your mind is, is just going through all these doors. But you just put it into, like, really good words. It was probably just, like, your alignment with it that kind of popped out to me, which I love. You definitely cleared some junk up there. So I love that. Awesome. And I think you made a really good point 
Um, I think, uh, and we'll have to we'll have to close with this in the next minute or two, next couple of minutes to keep under the time, the time frame. But um, is is you mentioned that you you kind of just. I forgot how you worded it or what was the example, but what came, the image that came to my mind was you're in a state that you don't want to be in. And so you quickly, you go find a book or you go find something that's going to instantly bring you into the state you want to be in. And I think that's great. And I think that's, um, I think people miss the mark on that because I think the pattern people tend to follow is I'm feeling crappy. Uh, let me look in my environment. Why am I feeling crappy? Oh, it's because that person or that person, or it's because of the traffic or whatever, right? And then, you know, then they try to escape that environment. So they think the solution to their crappy state is go somewhere else when really they don't need to go on a beach, they don't need to go climb a mountain. They don't need to, you know, go sit in front of their TV at home. They don't need to go into their one of their safe places. What they need to do is they need to tell their mind who's boss. And they need to realize that their mind just took direction from their environment, their less than ideal environment. Just like a little kid that wanders off, right? You bring that kid back. You don't, you don't say, oh, my kid wandered off. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna run away from this environment. When the kid, when the kid wanders off, you bring him back, right? Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> that is, um, that's some good, some good stuff. I love that you say, I'm gonna try and wrap it up as well here but um i like what you say no you don't have to go somewhere else you know because you know me i've been running from my problems since i was a little girl <laughs> i go to every place i could possibly go to i go to europe i go to the maldives i go california i go wherever i want to go right but my mindset is always going to stay with me right it's always going to stay with me so there is nowhere that you can run that your mind won't follow, babies. I mean, that is that is just solid nature. And I will, I will note though, don't run from your problems, but if you are like looking around your house, right? And like nothing is stimulating you, you know, go to the beach and take some breaths. You know, if you don't feel like taking breaths in your home, but don't go to the beach to try and, and, and like run because it's, it's not going to work, you know, or like you can go to the mountains and scream at the top of your lungs. If you can't scream in your apartment building at the top of your lungs, you know, so you can go to other places to do the acts that you can't actually do in your own home, or you don't feel inspired to do in your own home. So getting out is always good, but not to, just get out. Have a, have a purpose with getting out. Have a purpose with, with where you're going. So, um, oh, I wanted to say one more thing. Um, God, what did you say? It was an action that our viewers can take, and I really liked it because people like action. Um, what did you say? So when you're in a, like in a crappy state, instant state change, grab a book, um, talk to a friend who cheers you up, um, look something up on the internet that you've been wanting to look up. Do that when you're feeling it, like you're in a, in a crappy state of mind. If you're an ungrateful, in an ungrateful state of mind, write down some gratitudes, meditate on it. Do an instant state change because that instant state change, neurons that wire together, fire together. So you can just reprogram your mind through that. <laughs> nice. I like, yeah. how, I like how you phrased that. I got to write that one down. Oh, that's a good one. Quote of the day. Neurons that fire together. Uh, what was that? Wire together, fire together. Fire. 
<laughs> neurons are wired together, fired together. All right. On that note, um, I think we did it for today. Um, check out the show notes or the uh, description below for the Facebook and Instagram links to find out more information about us or to um, check out our frequent posts. So, all right. Thanks, guys, and we'll see you next week. Thank you. Bye. Stay blessed.